Hello guys, this is Pavel Skorop from blog Laravel Daily and podcast Laravel Business. First, I want to apologize for being so silent and kind of disappeared from video mode. For a few months, uh, I've been busy with, uh, with changing the strategy of me being a developer to now having a full team of developers and now I'm switching more into business mode uh, so I can continue talking to you from the business point. That's what the goal of the part of this podcast is talk business the business side of Laravel and today I want to talk about the things you have to talk about before starting Laravel project between you and client like the conversation what it should be what are the topics what are the things you have to talk about before the start otherwise you would have problems uh, during the process or at the end so some of those things are not uh, Laravel related some of them are so let's start with the basics with uh, common things with project management theory and practice what I would advise to talk about first thing is goal goal of the project if the client says I need a website that's not the goal the goal is to for example uh, volume of sales uh, find new clients uh, deliver some software and launch uh, earn money something like that the goal your your tool your website will be just a measure just a means to to reach that goal so what is the goal uh, as soon as you understand that goal deeper you will be able to provide uh, better quality service so that's number one uh, number two is uh, deadline and milestones, uh, the whole calendar, the whole schedule of uh, what are you delivering, uh, when do you need that, when does the client need that, and especially in terms of milestones. Usually if you have one deadline, so for example, let's say September 1st, uh, usually what happens is you code and you do the stuff until like August last days, and only then uh, something comes up, testing fails, and then the deadline is missed. So you need to know not only the final date, which actually isn't uh, the just the date out of the air, you should ask the client whether it's some kind of event there to present their service or some marketing campaign starting or some exact date, which uh, you should not be moving at all. It's just the final date. And then in terms of milestones, you have to decide on uh, what would be phase one, phase two, phase three, and each of the phases should be signed off and tested, and then less problems appear at the end at the final stretch. So you have to both decide on what are the milestones and what are the dates and what exactly needs to be delivered by that dates. So that's number two. Number three is tools and schedule of communication, especially if you work remotely which I do with my team. We work from a small country called Lithuania in Baltics, but we have clients all over the world and it happens remotely. And that's fine, it all works well when both sides uh, want uh, the same thing and need the same thing, which is communication, clear communication. Whether it's Skype or email or just project management tool like Trello, we use Trello a lot. Uh, you just need to know when, like, how are you communicating daily, weekly, monthly, what are the questions, what, what are the procedures, for example, uh, when the client wants to report some new ideas to you, like what are, the, what are the means of communication that's really important from the beginning. Otherwise, you end up with just silence for a few weeks and then both sides are kind of in a, they don't know what, what is happening and they start blaming each other for silence and then everything goes to shit actually. So yeah, communication is the key. So that's number three in terms of project management. Number four and the last from uh, theory of project management is people to contact with. If there are some people involved from the client side which are like project managers, designers, other coders maybe, uh, other partners, investors, whoever is especially the decision makers, you need to know about them. Not only know about them, you need to have their contact details. Uh, the person who ask questions, uh, who would ask questions or who you would turn to if you have any questions. That's four things from uh, just theory, not Laravel specific. So I will repeat, you have to discuss goals, uh, deadlines and milestones, then tools and schedule of communication, if especially working remotely. And the fourth thing is people to contact with. Now, let's get into our world of Laravel. Uh, as a coder, as an agency, as a freelancer, you, you work on a back-end of Laravel project, usually. 
for the project to succeed from technical point of view you need some stuff from the client which you have to ask for uh, and the earlier the better it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the project but uh, as I said the earlier the better so number one is front end thing front end theme design everything visual uh, I'm not sure whether you work with front end and with design some agencies do like full stack development including design we actually don't uh, we pr uh, we prefer that the client would come with front end done with front ender uh, or with a bot template for for example or uh, just with some small tweaks. I mean, we can do some HTML, CSS, jQuery, and JavaScript, things like that. But uh, apart from that, uh, client needs to take care of that. And you need to discuss that up front, like what is the status of that visual design, because if you, if you do your part of backend Laravel development, and then some other guy is working on design, and then at some point, like a few days before the launch, you need to merge that together, it will be a disaster. So you need to discuss that up front. Uh, number two would be texts and all the copy on the website. Usually what happens is uh, you create, again, you create the project, you're working hard and everything's fine until you uh, launch the testing server for client to test and then all the texts are missing. Everything is full of with lorem ipsum or with random texts and then you wait for the client to actually provide that and the client doesn't uh, is not in a hurry or they blame you for not delivering earlier for example or not uh, not reminding them of the text so again you need to decide what text should be provided when and in what format and stuff like that so that's number two in terms of technical stuff um, number three out of five is credentials for all third parties, all the integrations. So if the project involves some integration with like MailChimp or Twilio for SMS sending or you need to like install Bugsnag for bug tracking, anything like that, any integration or payment like Stripe, PayPal, whatever. So it all needs to belong to the client. Uh, for testing purposes, it might be your accounts, and it usually is, but for live, uh, for example, if you test it all on your testing accounts with, for example, Stripe, uh, and then client wants to go live uh, and they don't have their live account, which should be actually approved, it takes time, it takes time for testing on live, the earlier you have those credentials uh, ready, the better. So all third parties, anything involved, just talk to the client and tell them where to register, what credentials to send to you, etc. So that's number three. Number four, which is actually the most um, difficult and the biggest pain in the ass, is hosting. Hosting, domain name, uh, SSL certificate, uh, all of that related. Uh, what tended to happen uh, earlier uh, in my career is... Uh, we agree on Laravel project, I start developing, I've launched my testing server, client approves everything, and then we we need to go to live server, and then client goes, oh, okay, here's FTP details, upload that, please. And then I just freak out. So um, you need to make sure for Laravel projects uh, that you have uh, SSH access, that you have dedicated server, uh, or you can recommend uh, a server or any company, hosting company to the client like DigitalOcean, Linode or AWS, uh, whatever it is, uh, don't start with shared hosting. And if client has shared hosting, you need to uh, know about that the earlier the better. Because yeah, sometimes you can uh, convince clients to move hostings Sometimes you cannot. Uh, I've had clients who said like, no, 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 we're not moving. We have only this budget for the hosting. And it's not about budget, actually. The, the servers are pretty cheap these days. But to establish relationship with another company, to pay another company for hosting, some clients need to go to their uh, accountants, to, for, to their like uh, financial guys. They have to have approval for any budget spending. So yeah, that might turn difficult. So discuss hosting uh, up front. And not only that, what I would uh, suggest is you have hosting up front at the first, uh, well, 
in the first days of the project, you install fresh Laravel on the hosting of the client. Just fresh Laravel, empty, coming soon page, Laravel 5 page, whatever. But you need to make sure that Laravel actually works on their server, on their environment, and that they are technically ready for the launch whenever you, whenever you are ready. Uh, and that involves actually SSL certificate, so you need to make sure that HTTPS is working and you need to be ready before the actual launch, like days before, weeks before, or the earlier the better. And the final thing which might be useful, uh, it depends on your project, but if you need some data to be seeded, like Laravel has the seed mechanism uh, migration and seeds, so some data should be pre-filled for any environment, whether it's testing, local or live. And sometimes clients have that data. So any categories, any countries involved, any classifications, any drop-downs, uh, like payment methods, everything like that, it should go to seeding files up front. And then uh, whatever environment you're working with, whatever new developer comes up uh, to the team, uh, you have that data up front and you don't need to spend additional time on uh, adding that dummy data for any testing or any live environment. So that's five things uh, technically uh, technical related or Laravel related which I would uh, recommend to discuss up front. I will repeat that. First thing is discuss front-end or design stuff. Second thing is texts and copy for the page. Third thing is credentials for, for all third-party integrations. Fourth thing is hosting and the uh, domain and the SSL stuff. And finally, seeds for any seeding data that is needed. That's it for now. Uh, these are nine things I would recommend to discuss with clients before starting any Laravel project. Uh, I will try to make Laravel business podcasts more often. So let's stay in touch. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, also visit the blog at laraveldaily.com slash blog. Or if you want to hire my team, hire me for, for help with your Laravel projects, just shoot me an email at pavelas at laraveldaily.com and see you all in the next episodes. Cheers.